Welcome to lecture 10, the first lecture in section C of this course on the subject of viscoplasticity. In the introduction to this section, we saw a few examples of common viscoplastic materials, shaving foam, ketchup, and we can see that they are fairly ubiquitous both around the home and in manufacturing. What we've seen is that viscoplastic materials exhibit two types of behaviour. They exhibit the behaviour of a solid, sometimes an elastic solid, below their yield stress, and that above their yield stress they act as a fluid and they can flow. So, in the first part of this lecture, what we're going to do is discuss, first of all, what we mean by yield stress and quantify that. We will also introduce some simple viscoplastic constitutive equations that allow us to relate deformation rate to applied stress. And we will also look at a telltale sign that we can see in rheometry data that warn us that viscoplastic behaviour should be considered. So, let's start by thinking what we mean about a measure of yield stress. Now, on the blackboard, I've put up the familiar tensorial expression for total stress, sigma, being the sum of hydrostatic pressure multiplied by the identity tensor, plus tau, which is my tensor of stress due to deformation and flow. And we've seen this expression now quite a number of times. So when we talk about a yield stress, what stress do we actually mean? Because we know that stress is a tensorial quantity and that within the stress tensor, there are many different stress directions. So let's formalize what we mean. Any tensor has a magnitude associated with it. The magnitude is the square root of half of the double dot product. Now, dot product of vector and vector is scalar. Double dot product of second rank tensor with second rank tensor is also scalar. So the square root of half the double dot product of the total stress is a scalar quantity. And we say when that is below the shear yield stress tau y, there is no flow. Conversely, when that double dot product is greater than the shear yield stress, we have our flow scenario. The material has yielded. OK, so we can relate a measure of shear yield stress to our stress tensor, our total stress tensor. Now, shear yield stress is only one formulation of yield stress that you might see in the literature. Very often, you also come across something called a bulk yield stress. We're not going to go into the derivation of this here. You should have seen this already in previous courses, but this acts as a reminder that the shear yield stress and the bulk yield stress are related with the von Mises criterion. So we can write, for example, that the shear yield stress tau y is equal to the bulk yield stress sigma y over root 3. So you can interchange between those material quantities depending on what data you have. So let's introduce our first viscoplastic constitutive law. It is the Bingham fluid. Now the Bingham fluid says that below a certain shear yield stress there is no flow. This is common for all of the viscoplastic constitutive laws. Furthermore, it states that once that shear yield stress has been exceeded, you have flow that looks a little bit Newtonian. So if you look at the expression there in yellow, tau equals tau y, my shear yield stress, plus mu b gamma dot. Mu b is my Bingham viscosity, gamma dot is my shear rate, and we recognise that product of terms as being Newtonian. Now, let's plot out a rate of deformation versus stress. So I'm plotting here with gamma dot on the y-axis, tau on the x-axis. I'm first plotting a warning. Do not apply the second part of the Bingham equation, the equation that is uh, corresponding with the yielded fluid, blindly. Because if we just plot out the equation in yellow, we end up with a very, very strange prediction for gamma dot as a function of tau we have two distinct modes of behaviour here. So whilst it would be correct to use the yellow form of the equation once the flow has yielded, well, we cannot use it for the unyielded situation. So gamma dot equals zero below the shear yield stress, and above the shear yield stress, we have mu b gamma dot, so it's Newtonian once yielded. OK, and there in blue and in yellow on that graph will be the correct functional form of shear rate as a function of shear stress. 
So, the Bingham fluid effectively is a yield stress and then Newtonian behaviour. You might well expect there'll be another formulation which will be yield stress plus power law behaviour, and indeed there is, it's the herschel bulkley fluid. The herschel bulkley fluid again says that below the shear yield stress there's no flow, our deformation rate gamma dot is zero, but above the shear yield stress what we have is power law behaviour. Now, there is another commonly used, effectively non-linear, viscoplastic constitutive law, the Casson fluid, which says that, like once again, below the shear yield stress, there is no flow. And above the shear yield stress, we have a formula where we have the root of tau is equal to the root of tau y, plus a parameter that looks like a consistency index, Kc, Kc, the Casson consistency index, times root gamma dot. So gamma dot to the power half. OK, so we have three basic viscoplastic constitutive laws. We have the Bingham fluid, the herschel bulkley fluid, and the Casson fluid. And there are various parameters that are associated with each one. What I'm going to do now is just put a warning up on the board again to say that please don't interchange parameters between constitutive laws without careful thought. And we've seen a similar kind of lesson that has been learnt when we talked about the generalised Newtonian fluids, the various fluid equations like the Corot and the Corot Yasudar. We can't arbitrarily swap parameters between the two. We have to do it with careful thought. So on this graph, I'm plotting shear stress as a function of shear rate. I'm going to say my shear yield stress tau y is 1 pascal. And all the numerical values of my other parameters in the Bingham, the herschel bulkley and the Casson fluids are just set to 1. The units I've omitted because the units of mu b, the units of khb and the units of kc are all different. So the blue line would be the relationship between shear stress and shear rate for a Bingham fluid. Once yielded, it is Newtonian. For a herschel bulkley with the power law index n set to 0.5, so it's the same as the square root of gamma dot in the Casson fluid, we have shear stress as a function of shear rate like so, quite different from the Bingham fluid, and very, very different from the Casson fluid. So the temptation of mixing parameters between the Casson and herschel bulkley models should definitely be avoided. OK, so there we have three constitutive laws. Now, let's look at a very useful piece of information you can glean from rheometry data. The rheometry data in question is going to be apparent viscosity as a function of shear rate curves. And we've seen graphs of apparent viscosity as a function of shear rate in the first two sections of this course quite commonly. So let's start by looking at a Bingham fluid, tau equals tau y plus mu b gamma dot. Let's remind ourselves that my apparent viscosity is shear stress divided by shear rate. And so dividing through the equation on the first line of the board, I get a formulation for apparent viscosity. E to A equals tau y over gamma dot plus my Bingham viscosity mu b. And hopefully you can see that as gamma dot tends to zero, two things happen. As gamma dot tends to zero, the first term on the right hand side dominates E to A. And when it dominates e to a, we can say that e to a is proportional to gamma dot to the minus 1. And so if we look at apparent viscosity as a function of shear rate, in the low shear rate region, we see something very, very useful. And you should remember this as a cue to think, am I dealing with viscoplastic behaviour? A graph of log e to a versus log gamma dot will have a gradient of minus 1 at low shear rate if the fluid is behaving in a viscoplastic manner. And so this can be your first clue from rheometric data that you need to model your material in a viscoplastic manner. OK, let's recap a few key points here. Viscoplastic fluids are ubiquitous. They exhibit solid behaviour below the shear yield stress and flow behaviour above the shear yield stress. We've seen three constitutive laws that describe the behaviour of viscoplastic materials. We've seen the Bingham fluid, which is a yield stress plus Newtonian behaviour, the herschel bulkley fluid, which is a yield stress plus power law behaviour, the Casson fluid, which is a yield plus nonlinear behaviour, all involving half powers, 
And we've seen that if you examine rheometric data involving apparent viscosity as a function of shear rate, log eta a versus log gamma dot has a gradient of minus 1 as a shear rate tends to 0. A very, very useful telltale that viscoplastic behaviour should be strongly considered.